KTU Cares, a salute to local heroes. What kind of world do you want? Think it, think. History starts now. On KTU Cares, good morning. Two great women on the line with us today. Kim Poulos Liebers is the CEO, Chief Creative Officer, and Entrepreneurial Spirit of KGI Design Group. Woman-owned creative agency, which has been creating multimedia, strategically brand marketing and rendering solutions for over 28 years. Kim is being honored by the American Cancer Society as the corporate honoree at their annual Red, White, and Blue Summer Bash on June 15th. Perfect show for Women's History Month. Good morning, Kim. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Great to have you. Now, Stephanie Robb is also joining us. And she's been a proud supporter of the American Cancer Society mission for over 10 years. And last year officially joined the organization as a development manager. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Stephanie, let's start with you. Can you share with us what the American Cancer Society is and what the organization does here in our community, but also on a larger scale? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. So as you already know that in the American Cancer Society, we're on a mission to free the world from cancer. But on a large scale, we're funding and conducting research. We're sharing expert information and supporting our patients and really spreading the word about prevention these days. Um, Some of our large scale programs that benefit our own community right here is our service and educational programs. Um, So some of these services we provide are 24-7 access to information and support, and that can be done via our website or 1-800 number. We also have our Reach to Recovery program, which connects people facing breast cancer with trained volunteers who are also breast cancer survivors. And I'd be uh, remiss if I don't mention our beautiful Hope Lodges, which offer cancer patients and their caregivers a free place to stay if they're receiving treatment in another city. So some of these educational support programs like our cancer.org website still remain a place where people can find uh, information about cancer types, risk factors, prevention, screening, and early detection, uh, treatment, and um, concluding with survivorship. And our Get Screen campaign is another great example, which really is these days mobilizing a nationwide return to screening effort to lessen the negative impact from the pandemic. Um, The pandemic has now estimated for us that 41% of U.S. adults have delayed or even avoided their medical care because of the pandemic, just because they were were afraid to go to the doctor. So this has led to a, a substantial decline in cancer screenings, which can ultimately lead to the opportunity to find cancer early when it might be easier to treat. And Stephanie, uh, we have a long time with each other this morning, which is going to be great. We're going to discuss a lot of different things. But I think one thing that's really important is to make sure that people can go to the right places to get any further information about what we talk about today. Uh, Where can people go to learn more about the American Cancer Society and get more information? Absolutely. So cancer.org is our website, and our 1-800 number is 1-800-227-2345. Kim, what is your personal connection with cancer, and how did you start working with the American Cancer Society? Well, again, thank you so much for having me on this morning. It's so exciting to be here and able to um, speak with you about my connection with cancer and why I've decided to work with um, ACS. And um, I'm so honored that they would even think to honor me at the red, white, and blue uh, bash that's coming up in June. About seven years ago, I had a friend who had lost both her parents to cancer, and she asked me to attend uh, attend an event with her um, called the Taste of Hope New York City. So I went for a few years, and then she invited our agency um, to pitch to see if we could get involved in branding the event moving forward. <clears throat> so we, you know, we were honored that they even asked us. We said, okay, let's give it a shot. And they loved the work that we did. And we were able to really engage the people that they were honoring at that event. And so we had such a good time and it was so, for such a good cause. And, you know, everyone in the office loved doing the work. So we said, hey, we'll continue doing this for you. So that was about, um, like I said, about seven years ago, 
And since then, we've been able to donate the branding for um, seven years of Taste of Hope um, NYC, the Alan Shedlin Memorial Golf Tournament, the Financial Services Gala, the Wine and Spirits Industries Gala, and um, during the pandemic, NYC United Against Cancer. So we, we just love it. We just love being able to give back to the community and know that our work makes a difference. That's great. Really, really great. Thank you so much, Kim. And Stephanie, you guys have that exciting event coming up that uh, Kim talked about and that I talked about earlier on in the show, the Red, White, and Blue Bash. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm so excited. We are we are just thrilled to be hosting this event again this year. Um, the Red, White, and Blue Beach Bash is on Wednesday, June 15th. It's at the Crescent Beach Club in Bayville, Long Island. So this Red, White, and Blue Bash is really a very unique and fun event. It's right on the beach. I mean, your toes are in the sand. Um, attendees, including professionals across a variety of ages and industries are just, they're here to support our mission and our goals of eliminating cancer. So again, this is not your typical gala event with a sit down dinner and a full program. It's really a fun filled networking event that, that we have amazing food, cocktails, entertainment, fun games right on the beach. I mean, last year we watched the sunset on the beach with fire dancers. So um, it's a great event. I hope you can all join us. We do conclude with a short program to award our amazing honorees, like Kim, for her, her unwavering support. Um, so for more tickets and information, we also have our event website, and that is at acsredwhiteblue.org. Great, really great information today. Kim Poulos Liebers is the CEO, Chief Creative Officer, and Entrepreneurial Spirit of KGI Design Group. She is also being honored by the American Cancer Society as the corporate honoree at their annual Red, White, and Blue Summer Bash on June 15th. And also my guest is Stephanie Robb, Development Manager for the American Cancer Society. And sticking with Stephanie on this question, um, how does the American Society rely on volunteers? And why did you select Kim to be the honoree for this year's Red, White, and Blue Bash on Long Island? So the American Cancer Society truly prouds ourselves on being a volunteer-led organization, meaning we volunteer, we rely on our volunteers, not only to fundraise for and with us, but really to um, implement our mission and our programs. Um, so for example, we have our road to recovery drivers who drive cancer patients to appointments if they don't have the means or they physically can't drive themselves. Our reach to recovery volunteers and volunteers at our Hope Lodge, which I touched upon earlier. We have our event planning committee members like for Red, White and Blue who really just are the time and talent behind some of these events. We also have our community team leaders at events like our Strides Walk or Relay events. And of course, we are so, um, we're so honored to have our amazing company and health partners, just to name a few. So one of the main reasons that the American Cancer Society has continued to thrive is because of these passionate volunteers. So like you heard from Kim earlier, many of them, like her, have had a personal connection to cancer, and they, they want to give back. So when we were discussing the nominee, nominees for this year for the Red, White, and Blue Bash, Kim was clearly at the top of our list. She has volunteered with us for over seven years. She's gone above and beyond with her support for our efforts. And as the CEO of a woman-owned graphic design and marketing company, she's so creative. She brings fresh and unique ideas to our events, and we are really so grateful for all that she's done for our mission. Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and your company. Sure. So um, our design and marketing firm is located in Farmingdale on Main Street. We are truly a Main Street company, and uh, it's completely woman-owned, 100% woman-owned. I'm a New York State and New York City certified WBE, currently working on my um, Port Authority and my DBE certifications as well. And uh, we've been supporting small companies, large companies, um, companies from many industries, everything from construction to entertainment, sports networking to technology with creative and strategic solutions for their 
uh, design and marketing needs, everything from branding and creating a name for a company and their logo and their just their whole corporate look to if someone just needs a small change on their website or needs a whole website built. We do um, digital and print as well. Excellent. And, and sticking with that, Kim, obviously we talked about this earlier in the show. We're celebrating Women's History Month. What female figures in your life have inspired you the most? Wow, that's an interesting question. And there's so many people that have inspired me. I really have had so many wonderful people, and especially women, that really supported me. And from the very beginning, my high school art teacher at Plain Edge High School, right here on Long Island, Linda Nemeth, you know, she pushed me to be more than I could be. Um, my uh, mother-in-law, Nikki Liebers, who, when I first started this whole um, adventure working with the American Cancer Society, I had not really experienced cl cancer close to myself or my family. But in 2019, we lost my mother-in-law suddenly to uh, lung cancer, and it was devastating. And that just made me realize how much more important it was to do this. And she was a woman who believed in family and taking time to be with the people you love. And her passing really made it just so much more important to me that I needed to focus on the things that were important in life and to give back as much as I possibly could. Uh, she inspired me in my business. She inspired me in my life. And she inspired me in my community give back. And I have two other women, Kathy Hunter. She is the person who founded the International Rett Syndrome Association, another group that we've been volunteering um, for for over 28 years. And Annette Jaffe, she's the founder of um, designgivers.org, which I worked with her on that, and I'm a board member of that not-for-profit as well. And just, you know, women that are – these women are incredible. They They push – to be better than they are. They push to help the people around them be better they are, than they are. And they've all brought me to a spot where I feel like I'm, you know, I'm getting better than I could be and I couldn't be it without them. Very well said. Very, very good, Kim. Now, Stephanie, let's go back to you. If people want more information about the American Cancer Society, maybe they want to get involved, uh, their need of resources, obviously, with the American Cancer Society, where can we direct them? Yeah, so first and foremost, cancer.org is easiest to remember. Uh, for more information and resources, please always visit our, our phone number. Our hotline is available 24-7. That's 1-800-227-2345. And for more information about the Red, White, and Blue event, that's acsredwhiteblue.org. And again, the date on the Red, White, and Blue Summer Bash and location? It's June 15th at the Crescent Beach Club in Bayville, Long Island, right on the beach. Very nice. Very nice. Kim, what are, some of the, what are some of the challenges you face as a woman-owned company? Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have to say I've been uh, blessed that in business I have not had any, um, any kind of discrimination. I've only, always had people lifting me up. Men, women, you know, I really have surrounded myself with a very good amount of people. So I've never had any challenges like that. But there are challenges in inherently being a woman, and I happen to be a mother. I have two sons. So, how, you know, the whole work-life balance and how do you uh, divide your time um, when you, you know, you know you have a deadline and you know you have to be at a baseball game and, you know, just juggling all of that. And really, um, those are the, the, some of the biggest challenges I've had. But also, I went to school for art and design. I didn't go to school for business. So the idea that I'm still in business after 28 years and that I've you know, honed my business skills, um, that's really been a, a challenge as well. So you know, I've just tried to take the time to learn as much as I can, to um, take as many classes that I can, to apply for as many certifications and work with, you know, there's so many places on Long Island the Small Business Association, the Farmingdale, um, SBDA, the SBS. There are so many resources for businesses to help um, with those kind of business challenges. So that's really um, 
you know, some of the challenge that I've had as just a business owner in general, never mind being a woman. And then it was just the, the challenge of juggling. And now my children are grown up, so I'm juggling with caring for my parents as well. Uh, do you have any advice for young women in business, Kim? Well, um, now that you said that, I, I do have, and I, it ties right into the red, white, and blue event. And I was going to mention before that, yes, Everyone's saying, oh, my gosh, who wants to be in the beach? It's so cold right now. But it will be sunny in June. It will be warm and it will be sunny. And I would say for um, women who are starting a business, young women, maybe there are people now after the pandemic that are switching their careers and starting their own businesses, reach out to uh, women's groups. There is the Suffolk County, um, it's called SWEBAC, the uh, Suffolk County Women's Business Group very helpful. There are uh, many of the chambers of commerce now have women's groups that are very supportive and helpful. And I would say come to a group like or an event like the Red, White, and Blue Networking. The best way to grow your business is to talk about it, let people know about it, and network with people because you never know who is the person that is going to change your life. So, I'm sure there'll be a lot of life changers at the red, white, and blue event. So I hope to see a lot of people there. And I, you know, I myself am so willing to mentor or support a small business or someone who's just starting out. So I would say, give me a call, you know, ring me up and I will uh, help people get through the process. Great, great answer to that. Now, Kim, why do you also think it's important to give back to your community? Well, you know, um, I do feel there's a lot of reasons. You know, right now I know people are talking about, you know, um, what kind of perks people have at work and, you know, what is your work culture. And I really think that we've always given back. So I never thought of it as something I had to do for our culture. But now that I see that we do give back within the company, the the people that work with me, I think they are so – um, excited to be part of something bigger than just a deadline for a client. Not that we don't love our deadlines for our clients. Of course, we want to make everyone happy. But that sometimes to know that a project that you're working on could save someone's life or make a difference in the care someone gets is, um, is so much more important than just the bottom line. Um, and then the other part is that I feel like for me, you know, and I said this uh, many times, if it's 11 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the morning because I have to grab get something out and it's for a not-for-profit that I'm working for, you know, it's easy for us to do that. This is what we do. Okay. So sometimes it's a little bit challenging and sometimes you feel a little stressed, but you get it done. Where I think about a parent who's caring for a child that, um, that might be ill or somebody who's dealing with cancer in the middle of the night who might be sick, um, you know, dealing with some, you know, stress or, chemo, et cetera. And all I have to do is worry about doing a logo. It's nothing for us. That's how could we not do it Mm. is my question because people are dealing with things that are so much harder than me staying up a little late or, you know, having, uh, taking my staff and saying, we have to work on this project right now because it's more important. So I just feel like it's, I I just couldn't not, I I don't think I could not do it. (laughs) Kim Poulos Lieber. She's the CEO, Chief Creative Officer, and Entrepreneurial Spirit of KGI Design Group. It's a woman owned creative agency. And Kim is being honored by the American Cancer Society as the corporate honoree at their annual Red, White, and Blue Summer Bash in June. That's June 15th. On the line with us today, also, too, is Stephanie Robb, Development Manager for the American Cancer Society. And Stephanie, if you could help us out with where we go to get more information for our listeners. Absolutely. So cancer.org is our website. And if you would like 24-7, 365 information, please call our 1-800 number at 1-800-227-2345. Stephanie, how do events like the Red, White, and Blue Bash help the American Cancer Society's overall mission? I mean, Kim, gosh, you really... You really brought it home for us, um, talking about women in business and being a working mom. Uh, You know, I have have an almost three-year-old, so when you talked about 
deadlines and um, how it how it's so important to give back in your community. That really hits home for me. So thank you for bringing it full circle. But at the American Cancer Society, uh, we're bringing a, over 100 years of cancer fighting experience to support, most importantly, research for our future generations, um, ensuring greater access to quality care, we're influencing public policy, and we're providing patient support that we spoke about in so much detail so far. Um, we've witnessed a 29% decline in cancer death rates since 1991, and the American Cancer Society is a top private funder in cancer research, so we have no intention of slowing down. So events like Red, White, and Blue are supporting that mission by raising funds and helping to fill our commitment to these cancer patients and their families by funding these much-needed much resources and research at this time. Are there any other resources that the American Cancer Society has to support cancer patients and their families here in the greater New York City area and beyond? Oh my gosh, we've touched on so many of these amazing programs so far, but really the one that truly inspires my work here at the American Cancer Society is the Hope Lodge. And we are really so lucky to have a Hope Lodge right here in New York City as one of our more than 30 locations. So the Hope Lodge provides free temporary lodging for people with cancer who are receiving treatment while they're away from home. It allows them and a caregiver to stay there, and it has special accommodations like free private bedrooms and bathrooms that would, as we know, probably cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And it provides them even more than that, than a free place to stay. Each community and each Hope Lodge offers an inviting space. They have comforts of home like a communal kitchen, a dining area, laundry rooms, and even a gathering space. So they really feel like they're in a supportive community in a time where they really need it. I've been to Hope Lodge many times, and it is a wonderful space located, you know, steps from Penn Station, has, a, you know, a, a beautiful balcony that patients can go out and, you know, get some fresh air in the city, um, as well as the communal spaces for gathering, the library, the kitchen. And I know before um, the pandemic, I'm not sure if it's opened up now, but a lot of companies could go and give back and um, you know, donate dinners, et cetera, to the, um, the people that were staying there so that they would have kind of like a touch of home as well. And it's really a wonderful, when you realize that this is right here in our city and how many people want to come to New York City for treatment because, you know, of the, the wonderful doctors and hospitals that we have here. Mm -hmm. And many people that it could even be on Long Island, but it's just too much of a trip to go back and forth to New York City or, you know, even further out from the city, but want to be treated in New York, that could be such a challenge for them. And the Hope Lodge provides this wonderful space that they can stay at and be able to receive top-notch treatment in New York. So that in itself is just such a wonderful thing and it really um, inspired me to, in the very beginning, to stay, stay more involved. Mm hmm Stephanie, um, yeah. I'm going to go to you first on this one because it's really, again, talking about the Red, White, and Blue Summer Bash on June 15th. Yeah, so please, I hope you will join us. It really is, like I said, a really fun, unique event. June 15th at the Crescent Beach Club. It's in Bayville, Bayville Long Island. It's right on the beach. We're going to have a lot of great, amazing food, creative cocktails, entertainment, and games right on the beach. So for more information and to get your tickets, please visit our event website. It's acsredwhiteblue.org. And again, we will be honoring our amazing honoree Kim for her unwavering support to our mission. The one thing that I'm so excited about with the red, white, and blue bash is that it's a bash and not a gala and i've been to so many galas and they're wonderful but um people start to feel like maybe they're stuffy or maybe i don't want to get dressed up and not that you don't want to be looking your best at the red white and blue gala it's a much more um fun outdoors beach vibe um i know that in the past they've had a steel drum band so i'm looking forward to that the uh, food there is usually amazing, so I'm sure it's going to be top-notch. And um, it's really a fun place to 
network as well. You know, you asked me about, you know, what are things that people can do and with their starting a business, especially young women, make sure to come to these events. Here's a way that you can network, meet other business people in the area, as well as support a really good cause. So it's a win-win and a win for everybody. So I hope that a lot of people do come and join us. It's going to be a really fun time. If you do come, look for me, please um, reach out to me. I, you know, if you're a young uh, business person or an older person that's just starting a business, I would love to um, talk with you, make the time to help you get a start or whatever you need in terms of advice or mentorship. And I'd love it to start with a drink at the Red, White, and Blue Bash. Now, ladies, um, because we're still a few months away from this, there's plenty of time for people to get involved. Uh, I, I'm sure you're looking for people to get involved, not only to come maybe personally, uh, but, but perhaps maybe uh, some people from the corporate side of things also to help out on this evening. Yes, yes. absolutely. If we could, if we could get sponsors, that would be wonderful. So we have some uh, really amazing sponsors still on the table. Um, but so far we have Henry Stein, who's committed to um, honoring and being at our event this year. And we also have um, Schnepp Media, which is uh, part of the Long Island Press entity. They are signed on for this year. So I hope that you will welcome the opportunity to also put your name out there for such a wonderful mission. And Kim and I can't hit home enough. It's for a great cause, but it's just going to be a really fun event. Please visit our event website for all the information. It has our ticket sales, our sponsors, more event details, and you can find more information about our honoree, Kim. And our event website is acsredwhiteblue.org. One more question. You mentioned that it's right there on the beach with your feet in the sand. I think a lot of our listeners might be interested on what to wear that evening. <laughs> yeah, so I would say... Come decked out in your favorite red, white, and or blue. I mean, last year I wore a red, white, and blue dress. Um, but we're also welcoming like a Hamptons beach party type attire. So things like sucker, something very casual. We do recommend wedges because, again, you're going to be playing some games in the sand. So that's for you women out there. But um, men also, please, comfortable shoes are recommended. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Do you see, uh, for, for, from the men's side of things, do you see more ties than not? Do you see a little bit more casual, uh, like maybe just a shirt with a jacket or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen, um, you know, depending on how you prefer to dress, we've seen all of the, the attires there. But certainly we welcome that, you know, fresh, easygoing look. If you have those khaki pants and a nice button-down shirt, we, we certainly welcome that right there on the beach. Just a nice, easy, breezy night. Great. And it was, as we wrap up today with just a couple of minutes left to go, ladies, I will first go to Kim. Um, well, I would like to, I'm just going to ask Stephanie to talk about this when you ask her. So, Stephanie, if you could bring up the, um, the ticket packages and how um, they're working so that people don't have to worry about, they can buy them in advance, you know, the, uh, for the events that night. So, I just, if you would touch on that, that would be great. But um, the last things I would say, and again, this is a wonderful opportunity to get a start on the summer already, you know, June 15th and already be on the beach. What's better than that? Um, so it's a great night to come, to celebrate each other, to celebrate women in business, to network with other Long Island businesses. It's a great opportunity to sponsor for a business to um, have their uh, logo and their name out there and be associated with the American Cancer Society. And it's a fun place to be. And I just want to say that, you know, for me, as a woman in business, having worked with so many young people and mentored them from, you know, people out of college, people in high school, and watched them go on in their careers, um, it's something that I enjoy doing, and I would love to help anyone who needed any advice. Um, like I said, we are in New York State and New York City WBE, so if that's something that a woman-owned business or a minority-owned business needs help with, please reach out to me. I can put you in the right places. And I would hope that people would come and look me up. And if you can't, you know, look me up online and um, send me a message, and I will 
try to help as many, you know, businesses that we can. The small businesses are the ones that really are the heart of our country. And I think the only way that we can um, keep them going is if we support each other. And so everyone wins. There's no competition. Everyone supports each other, and then everyone wins. And, and we do have a duty to give back. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity and the um, staff that is so willing to do so. And I'm grateful to the American Cancer Society for even considering me. I, I'm just overwhelmed that they would even consider me. But thank you so much. And thank you so much for considering us for an interview today. It's, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Steve. Of course, anytime you want to come back on the show, Kim Poulos Liebers, the CEO, Chief Creative Officer of KGI Design Group, a women owned creative agency. Kim's being honored by the American Cancer Society at their annual Red, White, and Blue Summer Bass, June 15th. And finally, Stephanie, we'll wrap up the show with you, Development Manager for the American Cancer Society. Stephanie Robb, with any closing words for us this morning? Yes, thank you. I'm going to echo everything that Kim has said about, um, you know, putting these efforts out to have us on with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. You are an incredible part of our ACS mission, and we are so honored to have you as our honoree. Um, again, you can have more information about our event found on our event website, and that is acsredwhiteblue.org. We do have our tickets available online, so we have individual tickets. We have tickets for a couple that would be discounted. We also have some um, other presenting uh, opportunities on the website that you can get your sponsor activations there. We also have our Game Pass. We talked a lot about the games on the beach, so we have a Game Pass option that you can add to your ticket. So, again, visit our website at acsredwhiteblue.org. Excellent. Kim and Stephanie, both wonderful to have you here on our show this morning on KTU Cares. Best wishes for a great event on June 15th. And before you go, Stephanie, one last time where people can get information before we close out this morning. Yes. Please reach out to the American Cancer Society any day at any time at 1-800-227-2345 or visit cancer.org. Thanks, Stephanie and Kim. Have a great rest of your weekend, and thanks for joining us this morning on KTU Cares. Thank you.